There was a race recently, a autonomous race, a self-driving race through the busy, windy streets of San Francisco with Whole Mars Catalog, Minimal Duck, and the Kilowatts. And I got a chance to talk with Ryan from the Kilowatts about how that race went down. Was it a fair race? Could it have been done better or differently? I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla Weekend. <laughs> Thanks to newest uh, supporters. Uh, got some new folks on Twitter, Earthling Automotive and uh, Okinawa Dan, both deciding to support the channel as Twitter subscribers. Thank you so much. Your support is why I'm able to go to these events, meet these people, and generally um, eat. So that's cool. And I thank you for your decision to support the channel. It means a lot to me. It really does. So this was a great one. This was so much fun. Uh, Ryan uh, graciously gave us his time and uh, told us all about it. And we'll get into that. And real quick, if you're going to be in Portland on Sunday, uh, we've got Raphael from the Around the World in 80 E Days, the electric uh, journey all around the world uh, in an electric car. He holds a bunch of Guinness World Records. He's going to be at the McAdams Service Center in Portland, Oregon on Sunday. And if you can't make it, I will be live streaming it on my channel right here. Hopefully stay tuned for that. I don't know. Subscribe. Do whatever you got to do. So here we go. Let's just get into it. Autonomous driving is coming. No, wait, it's already here. In fact, I've got to speak with one of three very exciting race car drivers who recently had an opportunity to slalom through the complicated streets of San Francisco at breaknut speed. Autonomously. <laughs> Autonomously is Ryan from the Kilowatts. Uh, let's talk about that drive. That's what I want to talk about. Sure. It is a fantastic video. Um, uh, do I have permission to use a clip of B-roll here? Sure, yeah. Sure, sure. So. Uh, it was, it was Omar, it was you, uh, who was the third one again? Arash Malik, his booth oh, was yeah, over there. Yeah. Yeah. And it was Cruz versus Waymo versus Tesla FSD, the battle of the century. Semi-autonomous cars. Semi-autonomous cars, all three on, the, headed to the same destination. And you had, I think, the most interesting and exciting run because, uh, well, yeah. let's start with, what, do you, what, what is your assessment? Who is the true winner here? Yeah, I mean, it is hard to say. Uh, what, what are the metrics? What are the KPIs? Uh, Waymo, in my opinion, really showed up. Like, uh, the goal was to get from one part of San Francisco, right by like, the windiest street in San Francisco, across to like the Golden Gate Bridge, fastest, autonomous, whatever else. Obviously, Tesla actually did get there first, uh, but they had a driver in the front seat. It's not fully autonomous, whereas with Waymo and Cruz, they were autonomous. Uh, the Waymo showed up significantly faster than even the Cruise, and again, totally driverless. Uh, Omar in his Tesla and FSD beta, you know, had to have his hand on the wheel, and or also there was one intersection where he had to push the accelerator to get through that oh. it would have maybe stopped at an awkward point in the intersection. So I, I give all props to Waymo as, you know, the unofficial winner, but in some ways the winner of that. And, and it's tough to, and again, it really depends on your metric. The the Waymo and the Cruise are genuinely hands off, like, like do not touch the wheel, whatever they you do. They are robo taxis. They are genuine robo taxis. Um, you got stuck at an intersection in a point where Omar would have nudged. I yeah. would have nudged, you would have nudged. Um, yeah. I, I had a chance the other day where I pulled up to a sign and it didn't have a clear enough view. So it just stayed until the light turned red or turned green. Um, do you think, do you think that, that Omar needed to do the nudge or he chose to? I think he chose to, I mean, we didn't, we didn't know like the car hadn't come to a stop yet. It looked like it was gonna stop in an awkward spot, so he did. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I kind of wish he hadn't because again, we were trying to do like the autonomous test, so as autonomous as possible. As um, apples to apples yeah. as you can get. Yeah, so I mean like obviously, if it stayed in the intersection and the light had turned green, I would understand why he would, but he, he pressed the accelerator when it was looking like it would stop in an awkward spot and I would have loved to know what would have happened if he hadn't have done that. What would have actually happened? Yeah. Because uh, we're close, man, we are close. Do you think Cruz and Waymo's approach are scalable? It's really hard to tell. I mean, it does seem like Cruise is pushing out to a lot of new markets quickly. Um, I think they're now in like five markets. But as a user, it's not seamless. It's not perfect. It doesn't feel like, to be honest, like I think there's a top speed around 25 miles per hour. My girlfriend, who is more of a, you know, the average Joe in this type of situation, average Jane, I'll say, uh, she doesn't love when I call a Cruise at night versus uh, calling an Uber. So for that, you know, for me, it's the cost, it's it's a cool experience, it's different, but for her, it's not quite as smooth, it's not quite as fast, it's not quite as direct uh, yet, and so they need to still do quite a bit of things. Like, those seem like just small changes. Oh, just increase the speed, oh, just, but there's reasons why they've been limited to this point so far. So Cruise 
has still quite a bit of a ways to go. Waymo uh, does seem significantly better, but I don't know why they're not rolling out as fast. You know, they may be being more intentional to build out, but it's maybe less scalable at speed. And obviously Tesla, their approach is meant to be more universal, but maybe, we don't know, we've never been able to remove the driver from the front seat. So that's the hard thing to know is, when are we getting to that point we can actually remove the driver and will it be with the current hardware? That is that is the question. It's Even a hardware, billion dollar question. It, it, trillion, maybe? Potentially. The, why isn't Waymo cruised on the highway? Yeah, similarly, again, I think it's a safety thing. It's uh, What hardware limitations are they not communicating? You know, Tesla is fairly public about a lot of stuff. We obviously have the cars. We can make our own inferences. I don't have you know endless access to these cars. I can't push them to their limits necessarily. We tried in that video by going down the windiest street uh, to see if it had any issues there. But yeah, we don't know, uh, for example, the latency in, in compute. We don't know how far out the LiDAR can see. So at speed, you know, does it have to react faster than it can? So th there's these questions of, okay, we might be able to have robotaxis that drive us around at 25 miles per hour forevermore. That could be great, but again, what happens when it rains? What happens when it snows? What happens when you try to pick up speed? Yeah. We don't know. We don't know. And that's the thing is, to me, uh, autonomy remains just over the horizon. Unfortunately. It's, it's, it's close. I mean, I can smell the smoke, but I can't see land yet. Uh, so, yeah, it's, t it's going to be tough to say. Uh, I'm excited for it. I'm excited to just continue tracking it, to continue watching as it changes over time. We, we are seeing, you know, these are major hurdles. The fact that we can even have this discussion, that we did three cars basically autonomously across the city is incredible. But, yeah. yeah, it's really hard to see how far, how much further do we have to go to the point that it's going to actually reduce the cost of transportation. That's really what matters, is being able to get from point A to point B cheaper, easier. And again, that point A and point B shouldn't just be within a city. It should be, if I want to get from here to Seattle and I want to sleep in the car on the way, I should be able to do it. That's, that's the dream. That's the billion, trillion dollar question. Well, Google wants to get it to the point where you hop in and you press the I'm feeling lucky button and see where you wake up. Too funny. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. What are your thoughts on how gorgeous the super hidden uh, sensor suite is on Cruise Cruise and Waymo? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's not as good. I, I'm, I, uh, I always try to see things from like a consumer perspective. Uh, and obviously, if you're buying that car, it's awful. But, right. if, but if, it's, if it's your Uber, do you really care? I don't care. Exactly. If I'm in Vegas and that's what picks me up, I don't care. Yeah. I, so, want, I want comfort on the inside and cheap and, yeah. and to get to my destination without being sworn at in a foreign language, yeah. which I have yet to experience in a taxi in Vegas. But yeah, that, that's that's the, the promise is again, I, I don't care, obviously I prefer if it looks better, but I'm not buying a car, I don't need it to be perfectly seamless on the exterior, I just need it to be safe, reliable, and great. So let's pick a category for all three of them to say that they won that category. Tesla won on fastest. speed, yeah, yeah, fastest. Waymo won on? Most autonomous. Most autonomous. And, and fastest. And, and, and Cruise won on? It's a good question. Mm. They're, they're uh, not in the video, but they're in the most markets. Okay, there we go. That's a good one. What markets are they in now? Well, that's your uh, trivia me. Uh, right? They're in Austin, San Francisco. Oh, wow, I didn't realize. Um, I think Phoenix. Phoenix. Well, yes, Phoenix. Uh, I want to say they just announced like New Orleans. Wow. Or something like that. Uh, and I know they're, well, I want to say there were one more. Wow, and that, is, that Way is aggressive. Yeah, and then Waymo is similarly in Phoenix uh, or Chandler, Arizona and then San Francisco. And I think they've recently added one more, but I, I can't tell you for sure, and I, therefore I'm gonna say right. they're not. I, yeah, I, I feel like we may have heard. I'll put it on the screen, see yeah, if I Yeah, there uh, it is. See if How I do we remember. do? So uh, my question for you guys is, what should we be talking about? What are the right questions to be asking in this situation? It's such an emerging field that we need to, that, that there's a lot we can't necessarily anticipate. Can you think of anything I should have asked? No, I mean, I think that the, the real question again is, 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 as it's always been, when is it gonna happen when we can get in the back seat and go anywhere? That's that's the holy grail, and I, I think we're just watching it and making our own assumptions along the way about what each step means. Yeah, and it's it's tough. We don't know, we don't know what we don't know, because we're not there yet. Yep. So what do we miss? What do we misunderstand? Leave it all in the comments. We gotta know. Uh, awesome, Ryan from Kilowatts, uh, representing, uh, telling us what happened. So uh, yeah, stay Thanks tuned. for watching. Stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the next one.